guys, I want to talk pretty briefly about pop art and Andy Warhol. Andy Warhol is probably the most famous pop artist, but he's definitely not the only one, and he's not the one that started pop art. So pop art is short for popular art. And around that time, there was a bunch of stuff happening when pop art came to be, which was in the late 1940s. So what was happening at the time? You had World War II, which had just ended. Uh, you had the introduction of black and white TVs into people's houses. And this was the first time people had TV in their house before they just had the radio. You also had an industry boom in the United States. People were making good money. And you had abstract expressionist art happening at the same time. And abstract expressionist art is very intellectual, abstract artwork that didn't show correction. Actually, sometimes abstract expressionist really art did show a person. Notably, um, Elaine de Kooning, Willem like de Kooning's wife, about made a lot, a lot of paintings of JFK. So check time. them out if you it's want to. Time. But because TVs were brought into the house, because of war and politics and things like this, people started to make art about it, obviously, right? So in pop art, you would have a bunch of found objects a lot of the time. And found objects are just things that have already been made that come into artwork. So the pop artists would use icons from popular culture, like famous people or the American flag or things that were in popular advertisements. They would take all those things and they would make art out of it. And they would say, this is the art of the people because abstract expressionist art is very intellectual and you need to understand it and all that. And they were like, no, we're gonna make art about this in the now, the popular culture, the popular art. And the people who really did this in the late 1940s and early 50s were two guys. One was named Jasper Johns and the other was Robert Rauschenberg. And they were mostly painters and sculptors but they did make paintings of actual things. Notably, uh, Jasper Johns made a lot of paintings with American flags in them and also big target signs. So you have that. Then in the 1960s, mid 1960s, you had Andy Warhol coming up. So Andy Warhol was born in 1928 and he started out his artistic career actually as a advertisement illustrator, because before they had like the technology that we had today, people would put together advertisements themselves. And a lot of times they would do this with um, printmaking. So printmaking is basically when you take a giant stamp and you put ink on it. Well, you make the giant stamp, whatever you wanna make it. And you put ink on it and you stamp it on a piece of paper and then you have whatever was on the big stamp. Um, and then you can make multiples of this thing and you could keep stamping it on paper in different colors and things like that. So that was very common at the time because we didn't have computers or printers or anything like that. So Andy Warhol, yes, he started as this um, advertisement illustrator, but then he came into the world of pop art. And the things that you would recognize Andy Warhol for if you're familiar with Andy Warhol at all, is you would probably recognize um, the prints he did of Campbell's Soup Cans or the prints he did of Marilyn Monroe, who was a very famous actress in the 50s. Um, so Andy Warhol didn't only do pop art. He also was involved in music and sort of just like the cultural scene in New York City, specifically, he had this big apartment building that was his art studio in Manhattan. And he called this place the factory. And at the factory, he would have a bunch of, you know, musicians and artists and actors and people like that. All the people who were big at the time in the early 70s, he would have come to his factory and party and make art and stuff. So you had 
Debbie Harry of Blondie, Mick Jagger of the Rolling Stones, Grace Jones, who was a very famous model. Back in the day, you would have um, Lou Reed of the Velvet Underground, which I'm going to get to. You might not know who these people were, but they were very famous at the time. So he was very involved in this scene. He didn't only do that, he also produced um, and made the cover for the first Velvet Underground album, right? And um, Velvet Underground was also trying to do something a little different, a little bit counter culture -y, as they call it, and they later became very famous. But when they were making the stuff that they were making, it was more art-centric and less music-centric. So Andy Warhol was also involved in that. Um, so we're going to make some Andy Warhol style work. What we're going to do is we are going to make the same image a couple of times and we're going to do it with nice bright colors as if we were doing printmaking like Andy Warhol. Like I said before, a print is like a big stamp and you paint ink on it or paint or whatever and you stamp it on the paper. So what Andy Warhol did was he made these big stamps and he did it so that they'd be stamped in a bunch of different colors and you put them all together. So that's kind of what we're gonna do. We're gonna draw the same thing, but with a bunch of different colors and we're gonna make them nice and bright and beautiful. Okay guys, so now we learned a little bit about pop art. We are ready to get started with our idea. So here's the thing. I think a lot of you probably don't have square paper at home, but I do want us to use square paper for this project, right? Well, if you have rectangular paper, you can make square paper pretty easily. So I was using, I just have this, this drawing pad and it's big because I like big paper, but yours doesn't have to be as big as usual. You know, you can make a small one with whatever paper you have. But if you have paper that's eight and a half by 11 or nine by 12 or 10 by 12, you wanna take that longer side and make it the same side as the shorter side. So for example, if you had nine by 12 paper, you wanna take that long side, measure nine inches, and then cut off the rest, cut off the, that three inches. Personally, I had 11 by 14 paper and I measured 11 inches on the long side, cut off three inches, so now I have paper that's 11 by 11. There you go, perfect, got it, great. Okay, so now that I have my square, I wanna make smaller squares actually. So I'm gonna take this paper and I'm gonna fold it very carefully. And it's not hamburger or, hamburger or hot dog when both of the sides are the same. It looks more like a hot dog fold, I guess, in the end. But I'm gonna fold my paper like a hot dog and I'm being pretty careful about it because I want it to be nice and neat. I have some paint on my arms from a previous product. So I've got one fold in right here. I think I'm gonna fold it to the other side because I got a little, it's a little paint on this side. And I'm going to take a pen, actually, and it makes it nice and easy to mark that line when, uh, that pen doesn't work, when you have the, uh, the paper already folded. So, I've got that fold and that gives me a nice straight line. Now I'm going to fold it the other way. Now I have another fold and I'm going to do the same thing where I use it to make a nice little line in there. And I can end up going over this line later 
with pen if I want to, and I think I will. But right now, I'm going to tape this up for you guys so we can talk about what's next. So I got my paper all ready to go now. And what I would like to do is I would like to just have this colored in. So I said before, I just want everything, I want things to be, uh, I want every square to be a different color. So I'm actually going to take watercolors and I'm going to make each square of this a different color. And I want to make the color really nice and thick and concentrated when I use my watercolor. I'm grabbing my watercolors now. Up here, I'm going to make them nice and thick and con concentrated. And if I were you, I would go with nice, bright colors. Bright colors will be nice. So, first I think I'm going to go with orange. And I've got that nice bright orange in there. I'm being really careful with my edges here. I want it to be nice and clean. So I'm taking my time to make sure my watercolor is nice and thick and clean. I'm using kind of a small brush right now which is why this is taking a second to get done. I'm trying to make this nice and smooth. Nice and smooth and lovely. You know, technically for what we're doing, we could just do this with construction paper, right? Right? Yeah, we could. You know why we're painting though? Because painting's more fun. But if you don't have paints, of course, you can use construction paper. If you don't have construction paper, use markers, right? There's always a solution. So I will make a time lapse and get back to you. We are going to paint the rest of these squares. Be right back.
Okay guys, so I watercolored my, uh, my uh, background. Big reveal, it's gonna be a background. Um, and it took me a while to get it really nice and neat. So what I want is for you to get it really nice and neat as well. And you can do that really nicely with construction paper. You could do it with oil pastels or markers. Um, you can get nice flat color one way or another. I use really bright colors, but since I want you to make it nice, you take the time cutting the paper, measuring the paper and everything. I'm actually going to break this project into two parts, just so it's not so much to do for one week, but you're not done yet. Not done yet. So we are going to practice drawing something, drawing the thing that we're gonna have four versions of on that piece of paper that we just watercolored. So we're gonna practice drawing cupcakes, right? So you should get your whiteboard because you should all have a whiteboard at this point. And I'm gonna show you how to draw a cupcake and you can draw it along with me on your whiteboard. So here we go. Cupcake has a bottom to it that sort of juts outward, right? And with a cupcake, I like to draw a little zigzag. with lines and the body of my cupcake. So see here, I'm not drawing it all the way to the top, but that's, that's my cupcake. It needs icing though, right? Right. So I'm going to draw my icing. And I want my icing to kind of look really fancy and nice. So I'm going to do uh, these two little curves and then I'm going to top it off with a little swirl. And you could even draw a little cherry on top, right? If you want, if that's your thing. And then I'm going to draw the lines and the icing, right? So that one came out really nice and curved. So here's my nicely piped icing, all beautiful. I could draw some little sprinkles and things like that. So that's one way I could draw my cupcake. There's other ways to draw a cupcake though. Let's do it. And this is why we have the whiteboard. So here's another way to draw a cupcake. You could just draw a cupcake like this. If you get the bottom part, that's the bottom half of the cupcake. And if you want, you can draw those lines in there. for the cupcake wrapper. You don't have to though. And then you can draw what looks like a wavy water line and just add something that looks like an ice cream scoop on top, right? And then with that one, I look I like to put a little cherry on top and decorate it maybe with some more sprinkles up top. I can make it look like it has icing on it by drawing this little squiggle, right? And then you could color that in. And there you have it. You have two types of cupcakes that you should practice making because next week I'm going to have you make four cupcakes and I want those cupcakes to look pretty much exactly the same. So I suggest you do some practicing drawing your cupcakes. So next week, when we make them all nice, 
you will be ready to go with your perfect cupcakes and then we can make four of them really nice. So that's really what I want from you this week. It might not seem like a lot to just make that background and draw some practice cupcakes, but that's what I would like you to do. So when you are finished, when you wanna submit your work to me is at a point where you have both that background that you can show me a picture of and a picture of your whiteboard with a cupcake drawn on it. Yeah? Okay, you don't have to draw both types of cupcakes, but draw one and I'll trust that you are going to practice drawing your cupcakes on your whiteboard. Or if you have your own sketchbook, you could draw little cupcakes in there and color them in as you please. Cupcakes are fun to draw. Anyway, I'm really excited for this pop art project. We will finish it next week. But uh, yeah, that's all I have for you guys today. Bye-bye.